My name is Michael Dewitt. I'm a data scientist at the New York Times Research and Development Lab. Uh, as Jeremy said, I'm going to be speaking about Stream Tools. Um, Stream Tools is an open source graphical toolkit for dealing with uh, live streams of data. Um, before I get going, I'm going to spend most of my time up here doing a demo, which is an incredibly bad idea, but we go through it anyway. Um, before I get going, if you're interested, the source is all up on GitHub, so on the NYT Labs Stream Tools repository is where it lives. Uh, and then all the bits and bobs for uh, this demo uh, up on my repository. If you're interested in getting in touch, I'm at Mike Dewar on Twitter, and you can email me at michael.dewarnytimes.com. So um, before I get going, I want to make sure that we all agree uh, on one thing, or at least for the next 10 minutes, we all agree on one thing. Uh, and that's what a live stream of data actually is. So um, the best way to try and explain what a live stream of data is is to kind of show you one. So um, this is a uh, live stream of data coming from the federal short link. So when anyone at the federal government makes a short link using Bitly, um, clicks on that short link arrive in this data stream. So uh, we can see people clicking on White House, NASA, um, various kind of weather things, a lot of immigration clicks. This is a live data stream. So it's a potentially infinite source of data. Uh, every message arrives and has a specific uh, timestamp. Um, and people are clicking on these links right now. So the latency between people moving their fingers somewhere in the world and it's showing up on the screen is uh, remarkably low. Um, I guess you guys would think about these things as point processes. So for those of you that enjoy point processes, this is the kind of the basic, um, the basic framework. So this is what I mean by a live stream of data and it's this kind of thing that Stream Tools aims to help you work with. Um, the other thing that I'd like to do before I uh, get on with the demo is ask you all, if you'd be so kind, to right now on your smartphone visit vote.nytlabs.com uh, and you guys are going to provide me some data for the demo. You can collectively choose to ruin the demo <laughs> by not doing this. So I would, I would love it if you uh, visit. And just in case, I'm going to visit myself. Um, so if you visit vote.nytlabs.com and the demo gods are kind, you should see something like this, a number on a colored background. If you wouldn't mind showing me one. OK, great. That's, that's brilliant. <laughs> OK, good. Normally, I have a plant, but um, you couldn't make it. So um, <clears throat> so uh, this is Stream Tools, hopefully. Yes, great. So, okay. so Stream Tools is a binary. It runs on any kind of architecture that you're interested in. So Mac, Linux, Windows, uh, and ARM if you enjoy um, Raspberry Pis and uh, things like that. Um, okay. Um, it, <laughs> I haven't said anything that funny yet. Um, so it presents uh, a RESTful interface, and we do most of our work in the browser with Stream Tools. So uh, this is the, the interface that Stream Tools presents. Stream Tools is, like I said, a graphical toolkit. So it's using um, blocks and connections. What you can see uh, at the moment is a from post block. I'm going to make um, a to log block and connect them together. OK, so, whoa, OK, so lots of people, right. So messages flow between blocks through the connections. And each block does a different kind of thing uh, to the message. You can imagine the kind of things that they'll do, and I'll show you a couple. Um, one of the values of Stream Tools is that we try and show you the current state of the system that you're building. So this is a, a, a Brett Victor tenant. If you've ever come across Brett Victor, you'll recognize it. If you haven't, do please um, check out his work. Um, so what you can see on the screen is messages coming from your phones into my Stream Tools um, instance. Uh, every connection shows the rate, the current rate of messages in uh, messages per second. 
And uh, what I just did was dragged off the last message that that connection had seen. So one of your phones has sent me um, the fact that they're using mobile Safari on an iPhone using WebKit on iOS uh, and this beta parameter. So um, thank you very much for whoever's personal data that is. We got that really. <laughs> Uh, it, I only had to ask nicely in an English accent that turns out to get this kind of data. So um, what I'd like to do is uh, build a moving average of um, that beta parameter, so everyone's beta parameter. So I have a, a moving average block. I'm going to hook up um, the source of data up to my moving average block. And actually, I'm going to turn off the log because it's getting a little bit sad. Right. So. Um, now I'm sending these messages to a moving average block. This is a windowed moving average, so I'm going to choose a window of two seconds, and I'd like to take the average of the beta parameter. Some of your phones won't be sending me a beta parameter, so um, it's going to lose its mind a little bit. Uh, so it's uh, that's the reveal. We're going to find that out in a in a moment. Um, so uh, what I'm doing is calculating a moving average, hopefully. Uh, of everyone's beta parameter they're sending me. Uh, I can query the state of this block uh, using one of these little buttons uh, and find out that the current moving average is 24.6. I can also cause the moving average uh, block to emit. Oh, demo joy. OK, great. Also, if anyone's looking at 7070, please don't, <laughs> just for a minute, because uh, you'll ruin everything. It'll be embarrassing. So I can cause my moving average block to emit its current state by, um, by polling it with the ticker that I built at the top there. And so now what we're doing is every second asking the moving average block to um, output its state. So I've turned a, about 100 hertz signal coming into the moving average into a, a 1 hertz signal coming out, which is just the average. I can um, then stick this in a time series. I should be using the uh, menu. So I can stick this in a time series and store this over time. So I need to, uh, I'm going to store, say, 100, actually, I'm going to, for purposes of the demo, I'm going to store 30 seconds worth of data. And I'm going to capture the average coming through my stream. And so what this is going to do is hold a time series of the last 30 uh, messages that it comes in. So it's going to associate a timestamp with every message. And it looks a bit like this, with any luck. It's filling up from the bottom. So you can see we've got a, uh, over here, we've got a timestamp and a value. And this will just fill up and up and up. Um, one thing I can do is uh, give this block a name. So um, I'm going to name it TS. Uh, and one of the other values about the tool building that we want to expose is, um, is that it, uh, it's supposed to be a very lightweight tool and so interface very, very well with other tools. So every block exposes an HTTP endpoint. Uh, any outbound routes expose, are exposed via a WebSocket. And so we can hook into um, these blocks programmatically in other situations. So for example, I have um, a time series, uh, which with any luck, OK, great. So I have um, some a very, very tiny piece of D3 that's querying the time series block every now and again over the web interface that it presents. And this is the reveal. Um, so uh, hopefully, if you're still sending me data, uh, you may have noticed that the beta is the, the number on your screen is the orientation. So if you hold it up, uh, it should go green and say 90. If you hold it down, it should go red and say minus 90. Uh, and if we can all together for a moment <laughs> point it up so it goes green. OK, and then point it down so it goes red. <laughs> Great. So in, uh, in hopefully less than my allotted time, uh, although I have two slides left, uh, you can build like a you know, voting machine using stream tools uh, without, much, uh, without all that much effort. And I'm collecting all of this data in real time. And I'm operating on it in real time uh, and can query the blocks and the output of stream tools from a, a variety of different situations in real time. Um, so uh, that's the end of the demo. Um, a couple of values, if I can remember my Tmux. So uh, a couple of values about specifically working with live data. 
Um, I know probably I don't need to explain. Often I need to explain to journalists why dealing with streaming data is an exciting thing, and I think maybe not so much in, in this audience. But working with live data, on the other hand, uh, does two things that we value loads. Um, it, ties, uh, it ties you to the sensor in an incredibly kind of visceral way that's actually quite hard to explain uh, and that we kind of built t uh, stream tools to try, and, uh, to try and be part of that explanation. By, by being close to your sensor when you're working, you get a sense of the, the system that you're interrogating uh, in a much more um, uh, kind of exciting way. Uh, and it's, it's weird to try and explain without actually playing with something like stream tools. Um, and then the other thing that working with live data gives us the chance to play with is feedback loops. That's something uh, that's much, much harder to deal with uh, when we're doing kind of offline analysis in whatever situation. So if it's A-B tests in media or if we're trying to control things with our Raspberry Pi, by working with something like stream tools in, in live data, it gives us this ability to experiment with and do exploratory analysis that actually includes feedback loops, um, which makes, makes a huge difference to our analysis. Um, and then to finish off, some lessons that we've learned building this tool and trying to get it used inside the New York Times and elsewhere. Um, Stream Tools is composed of essentially high-level building blocks that you can connect together, not unlike Simulink, if you've ever come across Simulink, or Max MSP, if you've ever come across Max MSP, depending on which part of the world you're from. Um, so it's great for playing with. Stream Tools currently is great for playing with and mucking about, and especially doing exploratory analysis with these slippery streams. Uh, it turns out that it's not so great for being um, entirely serious with. We need, when we're being serious, we need very, very tight flow control over our messages, and that's something that stream tools, especially uh, when things get very complicated, is not so good at. Um, the toolkit is great for our specific purposes, but when um, journalists have been trying to use it to do, say, uh, look at um, voting uh, data coming from the wires, um, they've had ever so slightly different use cases and have found themselves having to write Go, which I should have said is what Stream Tools is write, written in, to actually use Stream Tools and build new blocks for themselves, which is quite a chore. Uh, and so we would prefer something a bit more flexible. Uh, and it's great for communicating simple topologies with. So the, the polling topology that I showed in the demo, um, it's, 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 really, it's really very, very useful to be able to show people who aren't um, doing data analysis uh, how things work. When things get complicated, you end up with this crazy uh, nest of um, blocks and connections that can be actually uh, detracting from the communication. Also, Stream Tools has a DSL. Turns out DSLs, I think probably in general, are a bug, not a feature. A DSL, if you haven't come across them, uh, is a domain-specific language. So we use those for building filters and uh, other kinds of blocks in, in Stream Tools, and they're crap, and uh, we wish we hadn't done it. Uh, and we, we are uh, very liberal and Machiavellian with how we how we represent state in stream tools, um, which, again, gets complicated when things get complicated. So um, I'm going to finish with the fact that we are building a, uh, a new product. It's not quite ready for the limelight, but it does have a load of really interesting design documents. If you like seeing that sort of thing in GitHub issues, uh, and so you can visit it at uh, the lab's GitHub repository. Um, and I think probably with that, I'll finish. Thanks very much. So for the hackathon tomorrow, what do you envision us to use this like for? Oh, I um, I don't know anything about the hackathon. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> if there's data you want to play with and it's coming through live, um, I imagine for hackathons it's probably really good fun with playing f uh, with playing with on a Raspberry Pi or a BeagleBone or something like that. Uh, that's where we've we've used that kind of thing, uh, uh, like away from a system that's generating new data, that's, that's where we've used it the most. So playing with your own hardware, uh, especially if it's ARM hardware, you can use string tools for playing with GPIO uh, stuff. OK, so we can download that from the repository, and then so. we run it locally. Yep, yep. Okay, it's totally good. open source, and you can run it locally uh, on pretty much any kind of computer. All right, that was a silly question, anyway. No, that's great. Uh, so this question is two parts. Um, number one, have you interacted much with products like uh, IBM Infosphere streams? And if so, has Stream Tools taken any inspiration from that? Um, so Stream Tools takes strong inspiration from the following. Simulink, Max MSP, uh, a weird thing called VVVV, which is pretty cool, um, and uh, bits and bobs from Quartz Composer and, uh, on the Mac. 
we haven't played with Infosphere, although um, it looks pretty serious, um, but I think it's probably a little bit too serious for us to play with. Uh, um, and then there's a bunch of tools that came out around the same sort of time. There's um, uh, Red something or other, which is a kind of JavaScript version of this. Um, there's lots of there's lots of tools that do this sort of thing. We think we're the only one currently that uh, is focused on live data. Normally you have to build a topology and then press go, whereas this the data comes in and you build your topology. Hi. So you haven't mentioned uh, okay. So you haven't mentioned like Spark streaming, uh, Storm. Samza, so why those tools are not good enough for your application? Um, so uh, yeah. Spark and Stormall, I think, as, as much as I understand, it involves writing code. So I, write, I would write code to fit into my, my Storm topology or my Spark topology. The aim here was to build a tool for the newsroom who um, aren't necessarily going to have the amount of time required to learn and deploy those kinds of tools. Um, the other half of the answer to that question is that um, when I've given this talk before, someone suggested like a deploy to Spark button, uh -huh. which would be amazing, uh, but we definitely have Oh, I see. So you, you essentially has a GUI kind of mm -hmm. language for people to manipulate. Well, the back end could be Spark streaming, for example, right? Um, I don't know if you can, I don't know enough about Spark to know if you can manipulate it very, very quickly uh, and add and remove things live mm -hmm. or without compilation. I'm not sure. I haven't played with it enough. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm.